Okay, so it's another chilly day in the city and we're heading out to the shop now. Uh, we're gonna get the fire going, get some heat in the shop. And we're gonna be talking about something a little different today. And what we'll be talking about will be blueprints, woodworking plans, and plan reading. So let's get inside, get the heat going, and uh, get this started, shall we? A lot of you already know that, you know, as far as woodworking goes, I like to sort of dig into everything, whether it be lathe work or scroll work or, you know, uh, flat work. You name it, I pretty much dabble in it at some point in time. But lately, I like to toy around with making these things, models, you know. And um, I use plans, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that you know, but I add elements of, of my own. Now, there are a lot of people that say, geez, I, I wish I could do what you do. I could never do that. You know, it, how do you find the patience? How do you learn how to do that? You know, I could never read plans. They're so confusing. I don't get it. You guys are woodworkers. You deal with tools and material that can remove your fingers in about 0.3 seconds, but you're afraid of paper with numbers on it. The logic just baffles me. I don't get it. So, on today's show, I'm, I'm not going to teach you how to read blueprints. I'm not going to turn you into a draftsman. I'm not going to turn you into some, uh, you know, unbelievable blueprint reader. But what I am going to do is I'm going to crack open a new set of prints. I haven't seen them before. And I'm going to go through them and just uh, hopefully take the edge off of some of that apprehension of using plans for your woodworking. So let's start off by opening up this set of plans. Let's just see what we're looking at. So here I've got a brand new set of plans. I, I haven't looked at them yet. I, I ordered these months ago. Um, and I, I just haven't had the chance to get around to looking at it, but it's uh, they're from Toys and Joys, and uh, this will be the military jeep and trailer, and um, this will be my next project, and I'm hoping it's going to be a good one. I, I don't know. We'll see, but let's just open them up and see what we've got. Now, I'm not going to even begin to pretend that plans are without their flaws. Um, I have not yet ever seen a set of plans that did not have errors. So with that being said, it's important to go through these plans page by page and just sort of have an idea of what you're looking at here. Um, you know those instructions that say fully read and understand the instructions before you start this? Well that's kind of what we're doing in here and with uh, woodworking plans, it's kind of imperative that you do that because you can be thinking ahead as to how you want to do things. So let's just see what we've got here. <clears throat> the first thing you want to do when you get your your blueprints or your plans, make sure you've got all the pages. Um, usually in half decent plans, right down here in the bottom, you will have the project, it will have usually the company, and it will tell you the scale, and it will tell you how many sheets you've got. In this case, it's sheet one of eight. So you want to go through, just for starters, and make sure that you have all eight sheets. So there's one, there's sheet two of eight, sheet three of eight, four of eight, five of eight, six of eight, seven of eight, and lastly, eight of eight. So we have all of the pages. Now, let's just go through them and see exactly what kind of trouble we're gonna get into throughout these prints. 
Well, the first thing I want to look at here, of course, will be this item right here, which is the scale. It's just a fancy term for measurements. Without getting too technical, this particular one says scale full. So in this case, what they're saying is it's a one-to-one -one scale, and they're referring to the project itself. Whatever measurements you see on these drawings, those same measurements will be transposed onto your wood. So in other words, this picture up top here is a full-scale drawing of the project, and you could probably take measurements off of this, and they would be the same as what they would be on these parts here. Now, if the scale was, say, 1 to 24, what 1 to 24 means, and I'm, I'm just using an arbitrary number, 1 to 24 means that for every one inch on your project, in the real world of what you're building then, it would be 24 inches long. So if, if you know the scale and you want to add accessories, you can make them proportionate to your model. So if it was a 124 scale and you measured, say, a shovel to go on your model here and your shovel was 24 inches long, well, then you would know that on your model it would have to be one inch long in order for it to, to be correct. So with these particular ones anyway, they're saying that they're full scale drawings, which means that the measurements that are on these drawings are measurements that you can transpose directly onto your stock. The key to doing any blueprint is taking it step by step and just taking your time and understanding what it is that you're looking at before you start to do any cutting. And where a lot of people get confused is in the views of the drawing. Like how does this base shape here translate to this piece right here? Well, the best way that I can describe it for you is that this is the flat surface looking down on the board in this view of the drawing. This now would be if you turned your board up on its side and now you would be looking at this side of the board. So essentially you can get all of the measurements that you require from these two views. This being the top view and this being the side view. And if we look at that here, we can see that at this end of the board, it's two and seven eighths. And what they do is they give measurements then all the way along. Before you start cutting, you want to check those, add those up. If you add up all of these numbers all the way across, you'll get the full length of the piece. The thickness of the piece, you may be wondering, well, how do I know how thick? Well, this is the top view. All of the measurements are there for the dimensions that you need for this top surface. How thick? Flip it over. Look at the side view. And at this side right over here, it says that it's a quarter inch thick. So you need to look at it in a different way of thinking in that you're looking at the board in dimensions that are broken apart. So you've got the top dimension, or the top view, and the side view. In other cases, you will even have an end view, which will give you three different sides depending on the angles and the cuts. That doesn't mean it's confusing, it just means you have to think outside the box as to what the pieces will look like. Another thing that I want to point out here in the different views, and I'll just stick with this piece here that we were already talking about, is if the set of plans is half decent, different views line up on the plans. Like if you can see right here, you've got these lines. And this again is where guys get confused. 
Why is this area shaded? Why is this area a little lighter shaded? Why is this, you know, what are these lines? Those lines coincide with the different cuts. So you can see here the end of the side view lines up with the end of our top view. These angle cuts here line up with that particular line. And what that line represents is this sharp corner. This line right here will line up with these sharp corners. And the shading is showing an angle. It's showing an angled cut. It is not a flat surface. This one here is a little lighter shaded, which is a little lighter of an angle. It's not so sharp. But if you look at it again, you'll see that that line in the side view lines up with the sharp corner here, as does this sharp line or this sharp edge here lines up with that line. It's just showing you as much information as it can. Don't let the information be overwhelming. It's, that's not what it's there for. It's there to help you visualize what is happening with this piece. Another thing or another area where guys get confused on these will be small little sections like this. This is not to scale. There's no way that the trailer of this piece is three inches long by two inches. It just isn't. And what this is here, essentially, is an assembly drawing. Um, and it's, it's just showing you not dimensions, not um, exact placement of parts, but what it is showing you essentially is how it all goes together and how it looks from different views. So you can see that the axle block goes, you know, roughly here, your tail lights, your fenders, you know, here is your, your, your gusset in the middle of your hitch arms and where your brace goes. It's, it's, an, it's, it's an assembly drawing and it's just showing you where certain things go. You could also refer to it as a detail drawing. Some blueprints or plans will have details, detail A, detail B, and essentially what that is, is it's a blown up drawing to give you more, yeah, you guessed it, details on how to put it together, or if something isn't clear because it's too hard to show it in single dimensions, the detail drawing can blow it up and give you a much better view of how it all goes together. So again, don't get confused with these. Use the information. Um, in this particular one here, it, it'll give you a dimension as to how far your axle block has to be from the rear end of your trailer. And in this case, it's two and five eighths of an inch. So there's a lot of pertinent information there to use. Uh, don't be afraid of it. Use it to its fullest. I know it's intimidating, but um, there are harder things in life than figuring out a set of blueprints. Okay, so one of the things that really drives me crazy in blueprints, uh, and it's very intimidating to a lot of people, uh, and that would be angles. And these blueprints are no different. We can see here that this is calling for a 70, de 70 degree angle from this plane to this plane. 70 degrees. Well, I'm going to tell you that if you set your miter gauge on your table saw at 70 degrees and you cut that piece, it ain't happening. I I'll tell you that right now. It is not going to happen. And so here's where the thought comes into with blueprints and with plans. And this is where guys look at it and say, well, I cut a 70 degree and it doesn't fit. It doesn't look right. It's wrong. Well, this isn't a snap together model. And plans are only guidelines. They don't tell you how to do it. The trick is, as a woodworker, you need to take the information, and that's all these plans are. These are not instructions, this is not a kit. You need to take 
that measurement of 70 degrees and think of how to do it. It's part of the challenge of working with plans and that challenge means that it's the process of figuring it out. Well, here's what I like to do. If we have a straight line from this plane to this plane, a square line, we know that that's 90 degrees. If this is 70 from this bottom surface up to this surface, logic would dictate that 20 more degrees would bring us to a flat edge or a flat board. So in order to cut this correctly, what would you think the angle would be to cut or to set your miter gauge when this surface here is against your fence? Well, it's 20 degrees, uh, not 70. This is the measurement inside. You want the cut. So there is a thought process involved here. Do you want to cut a 70 degree? Hell no, you'll screw up your project. Cut yourself a 20. Work from the 90 degree and work back to see what angle you need to cut. The, the, the trick here is if you're not sure, get yourself a bunch of scrap MDF, some quarter inch pieces, quarter inch thick pieces, and cut a test piece. And you should be able to lay that piece, because this is a full scale drawing, directly onto this cutout. And it should fit perfectly right there. So angles. You want to keep an eye on it. Don't just see a number and transpose it to your tool. It will not work. You need to see the number and really analyze what it is they're asking for. And in this case, it would be a 20 degree cut off of the end of this board. There are going to be times when measurements don't exist on the drawing. And there's a case in point right here with this front fender top. Well, this is the top of the front fender. Yeah, like that's rocket science, right? No, it's not. But we have all kinds of great little measurements here. We've got 5 sixteenths from this little notch up. We've got a quarter inch from this corner to the outside edge. Here, we've got a half inch radius, R one half inch. That's a half inch radius cut. We have the length of two and seven eighths. We've got one and three sixteenths high up here, but wait a second, what gives? What is this measurement? And what is this angle? Well now, now, now we're euchred. That piece is trash. We have no idea what to do with that piece and we're stuck. Well that's not so. This all comes with looking at the entire set of prints, like I said earlier, and being able to see them in both exploded view and assembled view. And those little assembly drawings that we talked about, right here. And we can see that this is the front fender top, which is the same piece we were just looking at. And here is that measurement in question. Here and here. Those pieces are just have no idea what those measurements are. The reason for that is all right here in this little note. And I'll try to zoom in on that. There we go. Assemble front fender and file to fit the body. They're covering their butts. They don't know that angle. They don't know if you have cut your front fender correctly. So if we look at this drawing, the original one that we looked at with this body base and here we can see an assembled version of what the body of our Jeep will be and this here is the angle and the piece that we would have in question this is where the fender would fit and this is the profile that we need to fit it to it's not even on the same drawing it's in the drawing previous so you have to remember that when you think you're done with one sheet you may not be done with that sheet because you're going to have to use it as a reference for parts down the road and this front fender is a perfect example of that don't get confused take a step back and look at all the pages not just the page you're working with 
looking at one page as you can see just by looking at this for the top of the front fender at that point your project comes to a screeching halt if you're not willing to get the rest of the pages and look at it and decide where it goes there is some interpretation like I said guys these plans are not meant to hold your hand and do it for you you need to sort of think outside the box and use these as your guideline another thing that I want to mention here on a set of prints would be dotted lines and I don't know how well you can see that but we have on the hood a dotted line that runs right inside of this part essentially a dotted line means that it's hidden if you were looking straight down on this hood you would not see what this dotted line is portraying but what it's portraying is this routed cutout here on the front end of the hood and on a little detail drawing we can see that routed out part right here again it's not a hundred percent clear but if you take the time to step back and look at the whole picture you can put it together here's your hood here is your dotted line showing something is hidden here is a front profile telling you to router as shown to receive the grill so this section here now is obviously routed out and if you look here to the side detail this is where those three views come into play that I was talking about from before there is your dotted line inside right here with a dimension of 5 sixteenths deep and half inch high all the information is there you just need to put it together so this is one of those three view sections that I talked about with the top view and then the front view just get a board here to demonstrate this so this is the top view this is the front view see how I turn that there the way that goes and this now off to the side this is the side view so top front side and together we get all the details of this piece where here we can see that it's tapered in this shaded area remember earlier we talked about it means there's an angle there no different here you can see that this tapers back that shaded area is showing you that taper with the side view we can see that it also tapers tapers downward and again you can see a sloped shaded area here at the top so it tapers out this way but it also tapers down as we can see from here from the back to the front and the dotted lines here are the routed out section here which are also shown with this dotted line and they're shown in this little detail drawing here confusing can be can be can you figure it out heck yeah you guys have come this far of course you can and there you have it I know it's not an explicit video I know it's not going to go through every detail and every single aspect of what to look for in blueprints and how to solve the problems of a blueprint but unless you get your fingers dirty and get your hands dirty and get in there and try it you're never going to know um, this here the plan that I've shown you is obviously for a wooden model or a wooden toy but the angles the dimensions the front view side views front views the way they transpose together the way the different pages go together it's no different for a toy than what it is for a piece of furniture for a chair for an ottoman it, it, it doesn't matter the blueprint reading is blueprint reading or plan reading 
whatever you want to call it, whether it's a toy or whether it's a piece of furniture, it's all the same. It's the quality of the print that makes a difference. And all you have to do is transpose what you see on the paper to what you're working with on the wood. Don't be afraid to question a plan as to whether or not it's accurate. Verify and check all your dimensions before you start cutting your stock. If it has five or six dimensions, add them up. Make sure that they add up to what it says they're supposed to. If they have three dimensions that say one inch, one inch, and half an inch, but they're saying that your overall dimension is three inches, you have a problem and you need to start cross-referencing through the blueprints to see where the problem is. Is it two and a half or is it three inches? Be sure to check your angles. If you're not sure, cut test pieces. If you're doing a larger piece of furniture and you don't want to do test pieces because it's a four by eight sheet of plywood, we talked about scale. Scale it down. Uh, instead of a foot, make it an inch and make a smaller version of the test cut with those angles that you could piece together that little model on your bench top and be sure that it's going to fit right when you cut the actual parts. Bottom line is guys have fun with it take your time verify your measurements and go through each and every page before you start working on a piece or before you start working on a section of that drawing look at that piece and see how it relates to the other parts of the print and and the other parts of of the piece that you're making and if you relate both of them together and look ahead as well as just at what you're working at you'll have a lot easier time working with plans blueprints what have you so guys thanks for watching I know it's a I may have confused you guys even more, but I'm just trying to tell you to give it a try because it's not as bad as what you would think. And I, I guarantee you, once you get into it, you guys will think, what the heck was I ever afraid of? Thanks for watching. Give it a try. And I'll see you guys again next week with another woodworking video.